Hi, my name is Alan Tsao and I help students master AP Physics. Today I want to talk about how do you get better at solving physics problems. The first thing most people say is you got to practice. And while it is true, you do have to practice more to get better at physics. Let's talk a little bit about what that means and what that entails. Especially for AP Physics, you want to make sure you understand how to practice and you want to practice using actual AP problems. Okay, so there are past free response questions. There's plethora of them. There's more than you could possibly need to do. And those are a good starting point to just to make sure you understand the style of questions and the kinds of things that you're being asked to do. If your teacher is asking you very difficult questions, you need to be practicing very difficult questions as well. So let's say you're in college taking physics and your professor is asking it. You need to try to attempt to find past exam questions or practice test questions. Don't just rely on the textbook or the homeworks unless your tests actually look like those homework problems. But let's say you're just kind of struggling overall and you're not like, okay, great, I'm supposed to practice. But how am I supposed to practice? What if you just don't even know where to begin? So when we're doing with each topping and each unit, the other thing that's really key as part of the practice is making sure we understand where to start in a problem. So every major topic has what I'd say is the starting mechanism when you're looking at a problem, what you're always going to do. For kinematics, it's always identifying the variables, um, the displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time. For forces, it's always starting with the free body diagram and going from there. Every unit has a specific process to break down a problem and you want to learn that process and that is what you're trying to practice. So one of the things you'll see on this channel is I do a lot of videos on the different topics and the big thing you want to be thinking about is what is the process? What is Alan thinking about when he's breaking down a problem? And then you want to emulate that. Not just for the same problem, do the exact same steps necessarily, but for a given problem, I'm going to start with the same steps, not the exact same things. Like I don't mean picking the equation. I mean, what is it that we're establishing that we're trying to determine? So we got to read the problem carefully. We got to identify the useful pieces of information in there. And then we have to begin the process. And if it's a work and energy process, my determination is what the system is and whether or not conservation of energy applies or what the work is on the system and applying work equals change in energy. So that's what I mean by a process. You got to start with something like that. And if you're just starting by just throwing down equations and plugging in numbers of equations, that's not going to, that's not very consistent. It's not going to give you a lot of success there. So you want to identify the process that you're going to be doing for each topic and then applying that process when you are solving those problems. That is what you're ultimately trying to practice. Then the practice will get better. The practice will improve because you will be practicing a process to break down problems. And when you see other scenarios, you see like, oh, when I have this scenario, that's kind of an interesting way that that process applied. But that key part is a process. So I have a process that I teach students, but I want you to find a process, write down the steps that you're going to break down every problem a universal set of steps. So when you're learning, say, circular motion, what are the steps you are going to do when you're solving that problem and begin to practice and emulate that? And that's what I, you'll see me do in a lot of the AP problems that I work out. The third is seeking out some help. Okay, if you have questions on how the process or you're like, how does the process, how do I apply the process in that scenario? That's where you got to ask a lot of questions. You got to go to your teacher, maybe after school, got to ask them. Maybe you find a tutor. Maybe you ask, I have a discord server. You're welcome to join. And people ask questions there all the time, but you want to be able to ask questions. It's really, really important to ask questions. That's probably the biggest mistake that I see most students face is they don't ask enough questions when they're stuck or when something is not making sense. The, the students who do the best are the ones who ask a lot of questions. I have students who start off the year barely knowing sine and cosine and not understanding the difference between sine and cosine. Because they ask a lot of good questions, they're able to figure that part out and ultimately even do really well on the physics material. So asking 
questions is really, really key. You don't want to just go this alone. So just to recap, make sure you practice with the right kinds of questions. Make sure you're following a process when you're solving problems and make sure you're asking a lot of questions whenever you are stuck on something and you are not sure how to solve a problem. Okay. Comment below, what kinds of questions do you need answered about in physics?